move it around too much when you uh, desolder the pins. So we'll get this one four, four smaller ones. There we go. Then again, you just kind of drag real gently. Don't don't drag over the pins too hard. More or less, just move the solder ball. All right. So now we get to use the handy dandy desoldering brake again. I just like to lay it against the, the solder um, and push the tip of the soldering iron against it with a little bit of force. And what you'll see is you'll see the you'll see at first a little ball of solder will come squirting out of the metal and then it'll kind of wick into the copper. Another thing is to be careful the copper gets very hot, so don't try to hold it with one hand. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that in the video or not, but the solder is now sucked up off all the pins on that side. And that's the side that we have to do next. So we will take the copper braid and uh, do the next side. Again, be careful, it gets very hot. And sometimes it's a little hard to line up because the copper braid is a little stiff. And again, if you mess up and bend a pin, then if it's not bent too badly, you can just take the chip and try to fix it with the tweezers. If you really mangle the chip, uh, you'll probably have to start over. So you can kind of go through with the soldering iron after you're done and make sure there's no bridges. And there, the chip is soldered down. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, the next components that we'll put on... This thing is in the way. It's my little marker to make sure I don't go off the screen here. Um, so what we have next is two LEDs go up here. Two capacitors go here, and two resistors go here. I'll talk about this guy in a second, this little pad down here. Let's start with the capacitors, they're pretty simple. So we're going to apply a little bit of solder to each of these pads. The thinner the solder you have, the better. This is a little thicker than I like, so I get a little bit more solder on the pads than is otherwise needed. Um, place the capacitor down, this doesn't matter, these ones are in parallel, so the 4.7 and the 0.1 microfarad are in parallel. Whoops! See, that's what happens when you don't let the components sit there long enough. Let it sit. Take it off, and there, that guy, that guy soldered down on that side. I like the way that one's sitting, so I'm not going to adjust it at all. I'm just going to hit it with on the other side. And there, that capacitor's down. Well, once you get going at this, it's pretty quick. Uh, okay, put the other capacitor down. That one's a little off-center. I don't want it so close to the other pad, so I'm going to drag it over a little bit. Alright. Grab the other side on it. These ones have enough solder on the other side of the pad that I don't need to go back and do the other side, do the side that, that I tinned first. All right, so there's the capacitors, pretty simple. Um, next, we'll do the resistors. The resistors are, of course, not polarized, so just doesn't matter which way they go down. So these little, these little black guys up here are the resistors. 271 ohm resistors. These are just for current limiting on the LEDs. And we just kind of set them in there, just like you do the capacitors. I'll do two and then I'll hit the other, both the sides. Doesn't matter if one of them has the text upside down, usually that bothers me, but for this video I'll just try to control my obsessive compulsive disorder. And there are the resistors. Now these diodes, I'm going to have to try to explain this, I don't think you'll be able to see it on the camera. The diodes have a little green arrow on them, and that's in the direction of the current flow. So, you want the point of the arrow to face towards ground. And in my case, ground is on the outside of the board. It's going this direction. So, this little green arrow we want facing in that direction. Um, the other thing is, is that on the you want the arrow facing down against the board. On the top of the diode, Alright, so what I was saying is that one side, the arrow faces down against the board, 
and on one side there is a little green strip and that's also your your lower voltage side your in this case we're tied directly to ground um, or a pin that goes to ground I should say so we're going to treat this just like any other component we're just going to pin the pads grab the component uh, and solder down one side of it first and I haven't done it yet but if you get too much solder on a pad just take your, solder, your desoldering braid and suck up the excess it's not a big deal no need to freak out okay so you get both of those guys down you touch up the side good that's it the board is done now like I said there this pad right here uh, is optional. If you bridge that, then that means that the output of your um, transmit and receive lines will be 0 to 5 volts. Uh, there's a pin on the chip called VCCIO, and that basically just ties that directly to 5 volts. You can also attach that pin up to one of the to a 3.3 volt output that's on this chip, or any voltage in between that you have that you're referencing. Um, I'm going to opt to leave this deconnected because I'd rather just run the wire over to VCCIO and choose the voltage that I want at the time. Um, your call. Now to do the pins, what I normally do is I take a breadboard and the pins and I uh, I have three hands now and I, uh, sim I'm not going to really go through this, I'll just show you what I do. I just take these pins, I snap them off where wherever the uh, whatever length they are. Uh, I snap, I put these guys in, and I just push it into the breadboard to hold it while I solder them on. So that looks about right, so then I just push down, and I messed up. I'm off by one. Let's slide this down to where it's supposed to be. Rest this guy in here, and then I'll show you real quick. I just this part is incredibly fast. You think, man, there's a lot of pins there, but you just kind of go along real fast. You can do both sides. I'll just do a few on each side. You kind of get the idea here. It's like pretty typical soldering. Just to make it so it's easier to remove, I'll get this side too. That needs a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Oh, that one's being a pain. I'm at a weird angle here. Good. So you do all those and you are done. Uh, next we will show you how to verify that it's working and do a couple close-ups of the board. Alright, here you can see underneath the USB chip, the USB connector, and the pins of the chip. I just wanted to show you what they should look like when they're done. Uh, notice that none of the pins are mangled, there's no solder bridges. Um, it looks pretty clean. That's basically all we have to say about that. Uh, just kind of trying to give you a final view of the finished product. Uh, now we'll go test and see if it works. Alright, here we have it, the moment of truth. We're going to plug it in. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. Okay. See that blinking pattern? That means you have succeeded. Um, here, I'll show it to you again just to make sure you are. See what it is. All right, so now if you're in Linux, what you'll see is in your slash dev directory, you'll see something on the order of slash dev TTY USB zero. If you're in Windows, uh, I'm sure that it will pop up with all sorts of annoying little bubbles saying, hey, you got new hardware, click on me, do this, do that, do this. Um, use Linux. That's my recommendation. Uh, thank you.